All right, so I maxed out with the camcorder zoom, so I'll try to go back and forth when I, like, I'll take a look. Um, and since I am using the camcorder, and as I've mentioned before, this, um, the tripod just is not very good. I really need to get it. It's just, this, it's the smooth back and forth or whatever. It's just so jerky. It drives me up the flipping tree. But I'll try to help also. Uh, Charles Satoro was mentioning something about uh, what terrain was that some... I just didn't uh, quite understand what he was talking about. So we'll go through the train bits and maybe that will uh, connect the dots for him as, um, and myself and other people as well. There's a lot of stuff here. All I'm going to say so far with the Osman Lee Harvey reading up the rules, uh, you know, the, uh, the scenario specific rules um, and, you know, it tying in with the grand campaign because a lot of that stuff is, you know, well, just caught. It's just brought popped into the grand campaign the exact same stuff um, there's a ton of you know stuff to digest and there's like uh, so many exceptions and I'm not uh, yeah I guess I am complaining but not complaining as in boy this game sucks or any of that stuff or how dare you I mean it's his game he can do whatever he wants if I don't want to play it don't have to play it um, So I'm not putting the blame on him or the rule system or any of that stuff. That's what I, what I'm trying to say. It, it's it's what it gets to. What can I deal with? Is what I'm trying to to put it across. And I hope I it comes across that way. In other words, I'm not trying to diss it or whatever. It's just like okay, but there's a threshold for what I want to do and what I want to get a you know get going kind of thing. It's just there's, I find for me right now when I'm reading. Maybe it'll be easier in the long run once I get you know I, I do a few dry runs of the mechanics but they're just there's so many freaking conversions to get to like just to find out like okay to convert to uh, you know and I, I don't I'm fine with it makes total sense I've got to sustain you know these units but there's like so many conversions um, on a side note saying that uh, um, watching and listening the lecture there of Rob Thompson there with the um, um, the British Rail in World War One, and I have, I'm going to have to go over. I've there's just like about maybe a 30 second chunk in the lecture, very very the very beginning, where he goes through the entire uh, logistical sequence of how goods are brought from, let's say, England all the way to the railhead. And now, oh my God, and that was on a side note uh, talking about uh, the railhead with the live stream and Callendale. Um, uh, and one of them uh, complaining about the way the railhead works with engineers and so on and so forth and that. Uh, I was like, oh my God, I wish this uh, Callendale could be watching the, or listening to this lecture right now because um, Rob Thompson goes into great detail about the, ra the railhead. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you so much. Just, yeah, I, I was just like, just, well, like I said, I'm going to be, uh, okay, put it this way, how much I enjoy that lecture. Last week, I avoided... I don't know if you guys ever get to get like this. Like I've got a bunch of pencils. I actually have a lot of items upstairs uh, that I barely use because I love them so much. I don't want. To. It's like, well, then what was the point in having them? And it's like that was the with the lecture last week. I was like, I loved watching the lecture uh, once the first time. I was like, and I just wanted the favorites. I was like, got to a point I wasn't going to watch it again because it's like, this is ridiculous. But I obviously did, and I'm going to, I'm taking notes and so on. I'm going over and over and over again. Um, and on a side note, yeah, the short guide to history book there up at work. Oh, man, this has been good. I guess it's written for like university or late high school students or something like that. But it's, re I'm really enjoying it because I'm, yeah, I'm, well, I'd probably be at that level. So, like the late high school or whatever, but it was, yeah, it's been uh, just a lot of fun. And it talks about, and it, on a side note, even though I said like I'm getting to this point, um, it was about, I was looking at it going, you know, when, when do I enjoy or do I feel best about certain times when I'm um, uh, talking about history, let's say in the live stream. And it's usually when I'm telling a story or I'm barely looking at the notes or it's something I know, not saying intimately, but it, I've, developed my own little narrative in my own head and I can say it back versus let's say just regurgitating of facts and uh, yeah the, the passages I was reading about this morning it was about that and I was like wow like I, I had to write it out huh. 
This is the <laughs> it's the ironic thing. I wrote that out in my notes, and then the next bit, like I was like, oh god, I really want to read it, like quote it, like put this, you know, so I can read this properly later. And the next chapter, it's ironic. I'm not doing, wasn't doing it for that, but it's about plagiarism. <laughs> oh my god, I just thought it was funny. Anyways. Remember this little spot? This is, oh my God, it's just unbearably hot and humid here, by the way. It's affecting even the way um, my pencil led to the paper because the paper is starting to soak up all the moisture now, eh? And it's um, uh, it's just not, um, the pencil lead is like I almost, uh, um, well, I did for a little while. I, I switched to a 4B, so I can't use the zebra pen. Well, I went back to it. But um, for a little while, I was using a 4B pencil. Um, because I was just like, geez, it just was not reacting uh, the same way I'm not used to. Um, anyways, on a side note. So, yeah, uh, you have to, uh, there's like a zillion things you have to take a look at of like when you land, like uh, picking landing sites. Um, and each landing site, as far as I know, this is all stuff, just, uh, just you know, just grasping. As far as I know, a landing site acts as a, uh, um, a level one operating port, which means I think you're allowed to bring there and back a uh, kind of like a you know uh, load and offload uh, three supply points and or uh, sorry three strength points were uh, worth per turn or something like that or supply points um, and then there's a gazillion other things about br brigades and divisions and like how how these represent like a uh, I think a battalion is one eighth work, work, worth of a division, but I'm like, well, where do these battalions come from? But I guess this is because we're getting down to that weirdo level and probably a lot of exceptions getting down to that Gallipoli level where, or other things where it's, um, you know, where it, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the entire game up to this point has been divisions and all that stuff. Brigades, some brigades and whatnot, but then and now you're getting in, into this, and regiments, sorry. Eng engineering regiments and what's up, maybe. Ha, ha. Oh, brother. Anyway, so yeah, it's, but you, you get my point. It's, so this is interesting. I'm going to say this on a side note, even though I'm like, everything's going to be in a complete different flux of like the big armies. They're going to be not going to be historically, because like, I get to do whatever the hell I want. It's the grand campaign and blah, blah, blah. I'm doing whatever the hell I want. But I don't. I hopefully this isn't disrespectful. You know what I mean in a weird way by trying to be respectful. But the original Gallipoli landing forces, all those I'm not altering. So that Gallipoli force, like I said, the if I can remember some of them, the 30th um, uh, Orient, um, the French Orient uh, Corps, I think I do believe. Oh, darn it! Uh, uh, or no, was that was it the first? It was the first. And the, um, yes, it's the first, that's right. It's the first, and it was the, uh, De Valkyrie rule says the 17th. But Dave Schroeder versus Wikipedia. I mean, you know, I'm going to go with Dave Schroeder every time kind of thing. Um, there's, uh, and there was also, what, the, the, uh, the New Zealand and Australian division, the first uh, Australian division. Those guys are going in. So the very first people, and I just randomly did it, I'm sorry, it's just, like I said, it's just the way it's going to go. See if I remember this correct. Well, I've got it written down, but uh, yet again, here I'm saying trying not to be disrespectful. Um, it's going to be the um, the Wellington and the Auckland battalions from the um, New Zealand Brigade of the New Zealand and Australian Division. They will be the very, very first people to land, um, well, in this area. Um if everything goes right. And remember, this is the beauty of these up to a certain point. I can call this off. If things start don't not working well, uh, I have to see what you guys can see. Uh, can you see down here? Oh yeah, you can see tons. Okay, goody. Holy smokes, I didn't know you could see that much. Okay, or can you see this way back down here a little bit? Holy, really? Okay, maybe I don't even have to move the camera practically anything. Yeah, well, no, not really, because none of that's of any concern. Wow, okay, this is a lot better than I expected, except, of course, if I had my flipping head in uh, the, I don't know if I did or not, I'll, I'll watch later. But, okay, so this place, Hefa, or, or whatever it is, so that's the, uh, one of the ultimate objectives. And, it, of course, I know that there's going to be crusade, um, 
connections left, right, and flip and center because of the, the place it is. I mean, well, why in the world would I have called it the Ninth Crusade and all that stuff? Anyways, as far as I know, this had something to, like I said, I, you guys are going to know more than I do. Something to do with the Third Crusade, Richard the Lionheart and stuff, something with his wife as well. So this spot here, as far as I know, is, I, yeah, I looked it up this morning. I was like, yeah, what a great way to like bike on to work. Acre or A-C-R-E. And uh, I know that was a uh, important place for CAD file in uh, the CAD file books and so on and so forth. And obviously with the Crusades. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a big long, it, it may never happen. It's going to take forever to figure out. Um, and remember, there's two offensive or two things happening. I think the British are going to be launching their offensive before the Ottomans were ready. Uh, I, th I think the German, uh, the British are in January 6th is when they want to launch their offensive towards Gaza. And this is tons of stuff I still need to read. Oh my gosh. On a side note, I did read today that um, I, I got, I don't know where, uh, one of them was called Wadi. El Hafa or something, and it was along the Nile. It was part of the. Uh, it was a, a part. Of, uh, it was a rail network, a rail line that was built by the British. It was about 550 kilometers long, I do believe, and it went through the desert. Um, so that's about 30 hexes, if I converted it right, um, in Dervel Creek terms. That's significant. They did it in about 15 months. Um, and oh, shit, was there anything else I could say about it? Probably. It was during the uh, Sudan, yeah, I went to the Sudan. It was during Su the Sudan campaign. I have no idea what that's about. So there we go. Um, I'm just using that as things are not impossible. However, that's with a British empire that probably is flush with money versus the Ottoman Empire that's broke beyond belief and is relying heavily on the... Um, on the uh, on the Germans supplying money. Oh no! I saw uh, yet again a side note. I'm still not getting to the train bits and um, the Ottoman uh, plans. Just quickly, I'm just a little bit. Is you know it was, it's been uh, it's a repeat metaphor or repeat whatever. Is the yin yang thing's been popping up and it's this. Well, I don't know how you guys view yin yang and all that stuff. I always keep thinking of like two fish um, mutually feeding like. Uh, they're integral. Oh, yeah, yeah, we get off into the one, two, and the three in the Holy Trinity. Like how you can get three out of two with one. Oh, it's just amazing. But anyways, um, how all this has been feeding into each other, like I said, it's, you know, f yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to start talking about the comments and the posts and what, like all these, you know, people say, hey, what about this, that, or the other thing, and so on and so forth. But just even with this, like with the with the game system of like, okay, I want to start another front and get off into the Ottoman stuff. And and it, it's like, okay, well, now I have to start reading up on Ottomans and then start reading up on Palestine. And, and, and then with that and rail and then that information brings in an understanding of how, like, for example, D Dave Schroeder and, or the Deville Creek system works or does it work for me? And so on. it's, you know... Oh, wowzers, eh? It's pretty cool. Okay, so let's go through quickly. And like I said, there's a bazillion things. I am, oh yeah, here on the side note, I'm just, nothing's here. I'm just using Supply Depot things to remind me that these two spots, even though there's no rail line and so on and so forth, are somewhat easier in many ways because there's so many restrictions uh, with a uh, line of, command line of supply and all this stuff I, uh, for, uh, you know during the summer I think they'll, they'll be affected as well but maybe not as badly yeah it the desert is not a good place to be basically uh, you know what it, I'm gonna find out about or I've been reading about but this is just to remind me that this is better terrain that's all as in you're not gonna die I'm assuming it's only rough terrain so uh, yeah it's it's weird eh, to look at rough terrain is like the best terrain it, in that area it's just crazy it really is I'm look I just look at all these little spots there's another thing I have to still uh, still learn uh, read about I think Dave Schroeder doesn't want you to do or maybe I shouldn't keep using his name specifically like use the rule system uh, Duvel Krieg seems to um, not want you to um, have these uh, supply depot hopping or army HQ hopping 
Uh, so you, you, every, like, um, when it gets down to it, as far as I know, once you cross, one, once your line of supply or line of command or whatever, I have to look it up still, um, once, it, once any part of that crosses a desert hex side, everything starts falling apart for you in a weird way. It's, uh, at least the way I've been looking at it, it you, after three hexes you need, or something like that, like I said, I'm gonna have to look up the, the specifics. It's just say, like, what I'm trying to say is there's lots of things to think about. It's gonna be a freaking logistical headache to the point I don't know if this big, huge offensive could even happen. I don't know. I'd love to see it happen. Um, so what I, anyways, is to use these uh, rough spots and see how long you can go without ever crossing a desert hex side. Can I get from here to here? Yes. Can I get from here to here? Yes. Can I get from here to here? Yes. And then it falls apart. So after that, it's like, okay, so I can put a, maybe a supply depot here. Is that the end of it? Because you always have to get back to a uh, friendly uh, map edge and so on. And so. I, I can get far, pretty far out, but I'm, I'm starting to wonder, like sometimes, are these strategically been placed? I don't know. I, I want to see. Um, anyways, I uh, want to start bringing down the, the Ottoman second arm. Of course, remember, all this could fall apart somewhat because um, as far as I know, the British are going to go up yet again. I said this months away from now. i got to start figuring out all this crazy nonsense. Um, the Ottomans want to take this spot. So obviously this is going to be another city or town or something. But take this spot and then start for two reasons. Oh, well, obviously to have two... Uh, two ways to get across. I'm hoping I can that supply depot hopping or army or line of communication hopping is not going to be what I think it is, but I think it is going to be what I think it is. Um, I'd like to get us, you know, obviously get this beautiful, nice little, I know it's still going to be a little in hell to get back and forth and you can't do all kinds of stuff during the summer, but at least have not this freaking just restriction here because then they just bottleneck you to hell. Ah, and here's the other bit too. Remember, if, I can, if the Ottomans can already start getting stuff brought into here, and the British have already started bringing uh, like their preemptive strike, or whatever you want to call it, towards Gaza, maybe uh, the Ottomans can go here and then cut off their head this way. I don't know. Like I said, it's, it's ages, ages away. Okay, let's go to the train bit, because this thing is going probably way on beyond belief. Um, <laughs> I think I mentioned in, in uh, one of the uh, comments for Charles the Taurus, like, oh, I'll make a quick video. <laughs> well, maybe this is a quick video. Anyway, so, so um, I think perhaps it's the steep terrain, this, this stuff here. And it's, uh, do they have it listed here, you little bastards? Major River, Suez Canal, Bos Fos uh, Bosphorus. Um, Port rail line. I don't see it listed here. That's pretty hilly. It has hilly. So is that no? Interesting. So uh, in the terrain effects chart and under this uh, simulation series thing, well, these these are different in the sense that this was done from the Sterling edition, and this is from the whatever. But I'll have to go and take a look at their at theirs as well. I guess I could. This is part of the Esmonli. Hold on, I'll see what the back of theirs says. Hold on. But this is from the Sterling edition, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's just a different wording, but... Like I said before, I'm not... Uh, I can get confused real quick. After the <laughs> I'm in trouble. Yeah, they have hilly as well. There's no steep. I don't see it. Hmm. Anyway, so these are different. Uh, so thank you, Charles Latora. Inadvertently, even if that's not what you wanted to talk about. So that's steep terrain. And steep terrain is hilly. And it uh, seems to be just like nothing. In that um, it's a little bit worse than broken, but not as bad as woods. In that it only costs one uh, movement point to cross. And um, minus two to the die roll and plus one to the die roll. So it's kind of uh, half broken and, uh, or one third broken and two thirds woods. If you can see, see that bit. 
I think that's what you wanted to look at. Anyways, there's a zillion other things to think about. Oh my goodness gracious me. All I gotta say is this. I don't need, I would, the amphibious assault, I think, has got more chance, not of success, more chance of happening based on the rules than some kind of crazy big offensive both sides. I don't know. But uh, fun is flipping hell to still uh, figure this all out. Uh, that's it. And um, off I go. Okay, see you later. Hope you're having a great time. Bye.